kata for fencing. Wait a minute. Isn't kata kind of a karate thing? Well, I do teach kata for fencing. And for the exact same four reasons that I teach kata in karate. In karate, a kata is a short prearranged sequence of actions designed to develop a particular technical skill. In music, an etude is a short composition designed to develop a particular technical skill. I chose to call our short fencing sequences etudes rather than kata because I'm a musician and I'm not Japanese. But when I say etude, you can think kata. And if I say kata, you can think etude, because the two are exactly the same in function. The problem with sparring is that there is inherently an increased level of emotional arousal, especially fear. And we know that emotional arousal, especially fear, inhibits skill learning. So sparring is the wrong tool for that job. The etude cultivates fundamental skills, by which I mean the internal skills, balance, line, focus, and distance. The etude teaches you how to let go of thinking and go by feel. The etude requires an extraordinary level of precision and an extraordinary level of self-awareness to develop that position. That is to say, the etude develops self-control. And self-control is the foundation of everything. If that was all you got out of practicing a martial art, it would still be well worth your time. It would benefit you in all things great and small for the rest of your life. Everything is patterns, patterns of movements that are connected together. An etude isn't a series of separate actions, but one coherent whole. You know, boxing coaches like to say, throw punches and bunches. When you throw punches, you don't throw a jab, and then a cross, and then a hook, then an uppercut. You throw a jab, cross, hook, uppercut, like one thing. Boxes call them combinations, and they're just as important in defense as they are in offense. You use offensive combinations to defeat your opponent's defenses, and you use defensive combinations to defeat your opponent's attack. When you watch a boxer working out in the mirror, throwing punches, slipping, and moving, I would say that shadow boxing is like the kata of boxing. Here's something that martial arts and fencing have in common. They're both deadly real-world combat skills that have been dumbed down for sport competition. And when I say they've been dumbed down, I mean there's a lot that's been left out. Some people say that sparring is more like a real fight than kata is. I don't know why they say that. I suspect they either don't know much about sparring or they don't know much about the street. Let's take uh, mixed martial arts as an example. I think we could agree that mixed martial arts is a pretty rough and tumble activity. But there are still some things you are not allowed to do. I happen to have a little list Things you cannot do in MMA. Headbutting, eye gouging of any kind, biting, fish hooking. Uh, that's when you put your fingers in the guy's mouth or nose and rip his face apart. Um, hair pulling, strikes to the spine or the back of the head, throat strikes of any kind, or grabbing the trachea. Fingers outstretched toward the opponent's eyes. Downward pointing elbow strikes, groin attacks of any kind. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. All those things that you're not allowed to do in MMA, 
Those are exactly the things you're going to do first in a real fight. When you're sparring, you can't do those things. You'd hurt your partner. But when you do kata or etudes, you can do all those things. And you can do them 100% all out. You don't have to keep your foot on the brake or go slow or anything like that for safety reasons. Now remember, you train like you want to fight because you will fight the way you train. And if your training is sparring, then what you're practicing is not doing those things that will save your life in a real fight. Doesn't seem like a good plan to me. Now, the sport of fencing also has its restrictions and limitations. It might be a limitation of target. Uh, you're not allowed to use your unarmed hand. There are no disarms. There's no grappling, tripping, or wrestling. Um, but when you do etudes, once again, you can overcome all those limitations of the sport. But what if your purpose isn't self-defense? What if your purpose is self-development? There are approximately 11.4 zillion ways to self-develop. You don't have to do a martial art. But if you choose a martial art, you should understand and respect its nature. It's fighting. If you can't accept that aspect of it, perhaps you should consider choosing something else. Music, dance, horsemanship, sailing, woodworking, anything will work if you do it with the right heart, the right mind, and the right spirit. If you do it with the right heart, the right mind, and the right spirit. But if you're going to practice fighting, then practice fighting. There are some students for whom sparring would be completely inappropriate. Uh, maybe they're beginners and they don't have either the skills or the self-control to be sparring with anybody. Maybe they're injured or maybe they're particularly prone to injury. They shouldn't be sparring, but kata allows them to develop their skills in a much, much safer way. We have two etudes that are the cornerstone of our method. One is a solo, and one is a duet. There are many, many variations of each one, from very simple to extremely complex. I wouldn't say the possibilities are infinite, but there's a hell of a lot of them. No matter how much you work on them, the etudes will never be perfect. Nobody does them perfectly. Not even me, and I, and I wrote the damn things. This is the simplest and most basic version of the etude, and the one that everybody learns. We very often perform this etude to music. Learning this etude gives our students a lot to work on and a way to work on it. They never have to wonder what to practice. This is what to practice. Here's a group of students doing the first etude together. Now, they're students of different skill levels, as, as you can tell if you watch closely you'll see little differences in their performance. After mastering the first etude, or at least a few of the variations on it, students can start working on the second etude. One of the things this will teach you is how to be a good partner for your partner.
The etude is the heart and soul of the sword, and that's why it's the foundation of our training. You don't agree? That's cool. But I do want to know your reasons. Feel free to leave a comment below. Don't worry, you won't hurt my feelings. I'm tougher than I look.